welcome to Silver Screen Memory Theatre of the Stars and our story this evening, Stella, Black and White. Stella is our star, just as we are her audience. We can see her now sitting in a darkened room, the warm glow of light on the dial of an old-fashioned upright radio outside, the stars, a little wind in the trees, sound of a car turning the corner two blocks over, disembodied voices from far away arrive in the room. They are joined by other voices from other rooms at other times and places. Faded brain photographs settle themselves into the attitudes and poses of the stories they propose to tell. Music from the radio moves them in various ways. They come alive. This is where Stella comes from. This is where memory begins. Stella, as a young girl, stood at the very center of her body, but in our story, we watch her move off into a million pictures, some of them in color and some in black and white. Oh, Stella, she can laugh like clear sunshine, but she can also dance with the dead all night. Stella, she's got a soul like a silver window. She's got a soul like a crystal radio. She paints herself like a rainbow twin in the morning. Then switch to Terminal City Dreams in black and white. Stella makes her scene as we make ours with difficulty. One eye on baby, one eye on the stars. Well, everybody's got an edge. Don't matter color or black and white, that's right. Photographs don't lie, they just signify. They are a secret about a secret. And the only trouble is, the more they say, seems like the less we know. So it's the fragment and the face, the time and the place, the ebb and the flow, the part and the whole, magic science and rock and roll coming to you from star-crossed Crystal Radio. Old photo sign, Stella with love, April 27, 1966. Stella, we already miss you. Time shift, 10 years later. It is night and the tiny blue lights of television shine in the windows of the houses in Stella's old neighborhood. The cruel theater of photography is everywhere. The photo habit spreads like wildfire through any small town before they know what hit them. The bad news photo twins are working to split between things and the pictures of things. They say, hey, kid, you two can make it big. You two can be as thin as paper, as pretty as a picture, as rich as all get out. Stella leans against the counter of the little roadside restaurant where she works after school. She turns her head and the wind blows the door bang against the jam and sunlight flickers long ago through the screen. Black and white jams the memory muscle and the photo twins, white faces and black suits, they drift in through the door. The rustle of old leaves in the corners, the bone cage of memory. The twins are two sleek looking young men in their early 20s. They wear identical faces, identical clothes. They are cool things. Brain, film, phantom, smile, a thousand famous people. They are the enduring sign of somewhere else, some other time. Everywhere they go, a thin, translucent film seals off the picture, cuts off oxygen. They are absolutely silent. And right now, they're sitting in a booth by the window at the restaurant where Stella works. A glass of water sits on the table between them. The water trembles in the glass. Something nameless drifts down that tangled ray of sunlight, slants through the water, splays a rainbow light on the scarred tabletop. Gray visage of an old man materializes in the booth like ghost Polaroid and the pure, sweet junk light of afternoon television. His character is wearing a tight-fitting dark suit and a pearl gray fedora which has seen better days. His name is Dr. Skinner and he's an area control from Biological Celebrity. His smile is very thin and very white. His eyes are all business. There is a minute shift in the gray scale and a tiny electrical convulsion runs through the bodies of the photo twin Stella. Can hardly breathe. The radio on the shelf behind the counter is playing the theme from Billy Flames, Radio Salvation Show. Stella stands behind the counter and her pen is poised in the air like a hypodermic 
Thank you. Come again. Printed in faded green ink on the back of the little pad. She holds in her left hand. Everything is right on schedule. Everywhere Dr. Skinner and the boys go, the Reverend Flame is right there also with his Ministry of Sound. The photo twins, they work for Dr. Skinner, a biological celebrity. His business is the business of the idol, the graven image, famous people. His business is the business of manipulating corporate coordinates so that the twins can slide their thin blade of impersonation between the sacred human body and the ancient rays of the sun. Okay, let's get one thing straight. The picture Skinner ain't human. He is not your ordinary bad guy. What does a Skinner want? He wants what he has not got, a soul. Okay, a Skinner is on the track of a human soul. He is nostalgic for the good old days. He wants those souls, he got to have them. Okay, every Skinner got a special tool for the job, what they call a Kodak or a Pentax. Each one got an automatic scope and drive for stripping the image down. Gonna separate that reflection from the living human body, relieving the body of a tiny portion of its reflective capacity. Okay, this is how it works. In the hands of an expert, the stripping does not sever the energy stream which connects the reflection or what they call a memory flex to the body. The old doctors called it the sympathetic connection. Dr. Skinner wants to get a picture of Stella into his photo album. Why, he likes to watch the stars. Okay, once he's got a good connection, the rest is simple. Doc Skinner just unravels more and more flex till he's got a real good nest, or cocoon they call it. The soul's in there, can't get away. Okay, you know the sensation, you know the feeling, and you know the temptation. Our next glimpse of the scene, and Stella making that scene finds her at age 19 or thereabouts living by herself in the city, momentarily unable to decide whether to be a dancer or a movie star, go into the music business or onto the stage. Well, what can you say? On the scene, anonymity has its own secret pleasures and on the way up, as it were, she plays the role of an unrecognized divinity engaged in dangerous business down here on earth. Sometimes shadows attach themselves to appropriate objects. Move when they move, wait patiently when they don't. Sometimes Stella's mood gets slippery, almost celluloid. At these times, she finds that she can slip effortlessly into a sort of weightless container, as if her body has become a perfect airless wafer of light, a tiny click, static electric, and she reaches into her cloth bag, extracts a little silver compact, flips it open, and checks her makeup at the bottom of the page in small elegant print New York Vanity Beverly Hills Paris Arrogance San Francisco Pride Berlin Cheating Tokyo Chicago Jealousy Las Vegas Greed Mexico City Seduction Stupidity Toronto changing season and the seeds of fashion give us now a picture of Stella it's early evening at the party of some friends just leaving town or just returned it's hard to tell anyway she is momentarily alone stands by a tall window in an elegantly furnished room and her face is turned to the available light delicate little shadow traces the line of her nose accenting the cheekbone shape of her chin, tilt of her head and her elbow, held slightly away from the body, reveals the shape she's in and makes us feel as if we've seen her somewhere before. Full page spread, advertising lingerie perhaps, or cigarettes, well, we've all been to a few parties in our time and I guess we can relate to that.
ground of memory is childhood. Consciousness is grounded in memory and in the body of the child. Out of the blue, pictures pop up like sitting ducks in time's silver window. Yesterday's sweet memory children play naked in the high park. Green grass, afternoon sunshine, trees in the distance. A toy train runs around and around the animal zoo in the upper right corner of the picture. Some of the children are painted a light blue. Some are painted in faded rainbow colors. A group of children gather around a game of snakes and ladders which is laid out on the grass. The players alternately roll the dice. Each child begins at home and aims at paradise. Each player's journey through life is shortened by virtue and lengthened by vice. A player who lands on a snake's head square like number 41, disobedience or number 53, vanity, or even number 74, murder, slithers downwards and is reincarnated as a lower animal. On the other hand, a player who lands on a ladder square climbs upward towards paradise and the virtuous numbers of faith, 12, compassion, 66, knowledge, 85, the eyes of the children light up with interest for every roll of the dice. The snakes are the snakes of Dr. Skinner. The ladders belong to the good ladder man, the Reverend Billy Flame. We've already heard the Reverend Salvation radio show, but today he seems different. We can see him now waving from the miniature train station over by the zoo. He's got bright, friendly eyes, and he speaks to the children in a wisdom radio voice. He knows seven different official ways into heaven, two or three unofficial ways. He can speak the language of the telepathic animals. He is the guardian of children and animals. He is a purely imaginary person, and thus, he's become absolutely necessary. Later on, children laugh and they dash about, playing hide and seek in the deepening twilight of the high park. Green fading to gray in the darker, it gets the harder they play, they run. They run, their heads on fire, and they never get tired because they have animal hearts, and their heads are on fire, and the cool flames flicker in and out of the trees, and their hearts make the rushing sound wind in the leaves, and such is the twilight paradise of a telepathic animal sometimes. You hear a little song like this. Animal hearts, not afraid of the dark. Little children playing in the park. Long come a bad man, chop off their heads. Animal hearts, they lost in dark city. Let all the children cry, and the children laugh. Long come that bad man. They're gonna chop them in hell Yes, it's sad but true Oh, sad but true When that bad man come Gonna be the ruin of you and dislocation that signal is drifting off that midnight station the journey to paradise is short by virtue and it is lengthened by vice take the color vision they're going to fade to black and white and the little blue children they're looking so pretty and they're caught up in the gears and lenses of black and white city wet blue streets and a mercury moon 
and the miniature violence in an empty room and the rainbow children they're wound up tight I play it in the sunshine and it's gonna hide all night Silence in one place Noise in another The days Reel on out like a disordered sequence of pictures Punctuated by one pose or another Stella walking down the street with the twins in bright sunshine Stella at the beach Blue water, lion-colored sands Or Stella wearing a light green silk chemise At home At home the windows of her apartment look out over the city, spread down below. It's night time. The curtains are made of a light gauzy substance. They move slightly, and a little breeze comes out of the twinkling lights in the windows, signs, street lights below, and it goes straight to her heart with a little tug. It floats her out the window just to take a peek around, check out the scene. You know how it is. Now, we can watch Stella walk on down that night street. Across the gas station lot to the bank machine. Over two blocks and down into the lobby of the Mars Hotel. And from there into a little club called the Blue Light Brain Zoo. Hell, it is nothing but a projection on a blank wall. But you know how it is. Our projections go before us. They make their arrangements. They decide upon names and locations. We arrive, open the door, and go on inside. Somehow. Everything is just like we knew it would be. This is how Doc Skinner talks in the blue light. This is your master of ceremonies, Dr. Skinner, and your face at SCREW Channel 13, broadcasting live from the Blue Light Brain Zoo. We have something for everyone, something just for you. Yes, indeed, we got a little rhythm, a little saxophone. Some intelligent Motown or just the blues. Don't you love that black vinyl, which is so smooth? You know you're gonna have to pay, maybe not right away, but someday soon, say. Come on, honey. You got nothing to lose. Little stars in a city skyline make a lover want to conceptualize, tell lies, say things like I'm on food for your rhythm. Love the way that you walk. Yeah, love the way that you move your lips when you talk that talk. And when Stella hits the blue light, she slides through the crowd towards the gilded animal cage, raised high above the dance floor. And when she goes up into the glare of that cage, the faces of all animals turn upwards towards her. And in the center of each face is a single, unblinking eye and a shaven shin. Photo slick, this hard to soft focus. Love that old city hocus pocus. I'm seeing. Every inch is an occasion for performance. And you are a performer. You make your move, then terminate the gesture. That's a pose. Every pose supposes our gaze already frozen. The terminal eye turns back upon itself, mobilized our eyes. Raise our bodies to the ball. It's one to one, it's two by two. It's turn and turn and turn again. We see you, see us, see you. It's vision and revision. Your face stone cold, it's just stone. It's just a thing, that's a thing. I'm a scene. And one eyed animals say, We see you, see us, see you. It's like dark, it's black and white. Silver mirror and a bird in flight. Head on fire and hot. Dust, 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 so it goes. And while we're getting wrecked on the Medusa effect, you picture each move. You adjust it in your mind until it fits the music. Take your time, take your time. The lyrics may be ambiguous, but you can dance to it. 
Your life is both fashionable and serious. Ambiguity is meant to increase psychological interest, not just make you feel edgy and in business you're in, a person needs a little edge. Ha ha, your perfect body is its own perfect law. The voice in your head says, move your mind and your body moves too. Move your body and your body moves you. From the top of your head to the tips of your toes. From the articulation of the hips to the muscle separation in your upper and lower torso, your arms, hands, feet, elbows, knees, and the tilt of your head, pose, then break the pose, turn once, turn again. Then the voice in your head says, don't take no for an answer, honey. You are meant to be a dancer. The caption on screen reads, to be is to be perceived. Dr. Skinner's lizard face appears on the projection screen right away. It starts to change from the inside out. It's first the nose, then the mouth, the planes of the cheeks. Color shifting into the red spectrum. Dead eyes come alive. And for one brief moment, the face of Reverend Billy shines out of Dr. Skinner's grinning skull. A little neon flame licks out of the mouth. Quite a trick. No shit. It's how the Reverend speaks. Turn on your radio. This jockey talk radio sparks in the wet blue night, I tell you. Your journey to paradise is shortened by virtue and lengthened by vice. Let the voice of ancient biological radio light up your life. Do you hear what I hear? Sound of saxophones and telephones. And a train whistle moan and a dry bones clap in a dead city night. And the voodoo dolls and the carbon types are making hollabaloo over on 10th Avenue. Look in the mirror. Look out the window. Skulls are breaking out there. And their spines crack. Blood flows down the street in a twisted track. There's a cold, wild wind. And the neon rain comes splashing down the black ground. Heavy machines tearing at the east ground. And out on the street, you can hear the dangerous sparkle in the Russian plains. Amber green, turquoise, crimson, and that silent scream. And they rise up into the air and they fade down into the timeless, dry, rustle of old newspapers. Dead air, radio static, lapping up on the shores of consciousness. And the message is... To dance is to be free. To express yourself. To be at one with the universe. The crowd, the beat. The bright lights, the scene we make on a Saturday night. At the very center of civilization, there remains a hunger for strong sensation. It's a rock and roll, a twist song. Down in the jungle, and it's over by the swamp. And say that, do that boogie woogie blues till you're wearing out your shoes. And let that dirty music. Activate your spine, say you are yours They are your mind, they're feeling good, feeling fine Play that dirty music all the time Well, someday like the meat will cook Someday like it raw And someday like that chicken scratch Well, someday walk the dog And it's a, a virtue and vice And it's nasty tonight Hello paradise on the coast Oh, twins, say, hey, babe, you're right off the record. Don't be slack. Oh, what you need is a funky soundtrack that don't talk back. Hey, babe, hey, babe, pick up your mind, pitch your face to match. Life's so high, ain't I'm never gonna crash, but take my word. My word is true, there's many shades of grief And the blue light rain soon, it's like this, snickety snack It's clackety clack, clackety clack That motorized drive, 
It's gonna take another layer off your back. Late night TV, channel 13. And the technical fingers are beeping on the molecular screen. Your body is on display. 24 hours a day. The landscape is plagued by an incessant sexual noise. And all you can hear is rap, rap, blah, blah. It's books we read, things we saw. It's crack, quack down at the zoo. But there ain't no kids around. And it ain't a Sunday afternoon. It's animals. It's just animals. It's just animals. Down at the Blue Light Brain Zoo. Focus shifts. Then shifts again, as the brain preceded by the eye, private to the end, scrambles to maintain equilibrium and in so doing establishes the continuum of the world, the logics of space and time, inside and outside, the upwards of virtue and the downwards of vice, the soul's journey towards paradise defined by a whole constellation of moments of attention, each moment possessing its own representation of the real, each in turn defined in terms of the unreal, the undefined, the clearest of pictures, always punctured or punctuated by darkness, consciousness, and unconsciousness constituting the limits of the world, the self, and the whole crowd of its other, a message from mother there, there Cicely had a man far away. Sound of a supernatural storm blowing in from the west, now in the silver rain goes. Later pat on the old tin roof, returning us, at last, more or less intact, more or less the worse for wear to the story of ourselves and the story of Stella. The sequence of words and music, the scene, and all those changes of focus which unfold against a whole sequence of silences, each one blacker than a telephone. Secrets. She said she told them all last night And the x-ray animals, they come creeping out of there like TVs And the blue-skinned children, they run down their own sweet memories And the smooth mannequin bodies, they got no genitals and no mistakes They're just a black and white flicker skin pictures with nothing in them And the creatures of habit, their eyes are full of sadness Don't touch, you can't have it And the wet blue streets, they shine under a mercury moon and miniature vines getting done in those empty rooms at black. It's a black heat out the body. And there ain't no white but the blinding white light of the first caress. And her restless bodies are dressed and undressed down at the blue light. Rain suit, big shadows, big names. And adult bodies all tangled up in children's games.
Come on, folks, move in close. Don't be shy. The person got to learn to love themselves, they can't do better. Nobody quite fits their skin, but that's only human. Everybody's got their problems, and everybody's a real character on their own scene. Now, if you can't get it right the first time, that's what rehearsals are for. On the scene, everybody watch you, watch them, watch you. Dream the dream of an ideal body, or oh, bodies in the plural, one so good without the other. On the scene, everybody got the same dreams. The dream of sexual purity, the dream of a perfect body, completely undisguised, composed of freedom and innocent sunlight. A body instantly recognized by sensations and pleasures which are neither rare nor binding. Well, that's a mouthful. Talk about romance. But that's what we've all been waiting for, is it not? No more sickness, corruption, broken bodies, torn flesh, passionate murders, worn out takers, varicose veins, or cancerous tissue. No more terminal love affairs, lingering maladies, stink of old flesh, continents, mutated cells, HIV positive, chronic fatigue, death, paralysis, old age, poison, death, dumb, blind, crippled, sleepless, nauseous, itch, stitch, all soul sick, swollen glands, blocked energy, and unnatural desires. Tell me if it is not true. That's what we've been waiting for. The pleasures of the flesh. Finally straightened out. A healthy mind and a healthy body. The unity of man and nature. Oh, pardon the expression. Come on now. I'm talking to you. Just drop on down to the Terminal City Body Auction. I'm going to see old Dr. Skinner. Get you some universal fashion action and cosmic unisex underwear and more. Today, everyone can be their very own biological celebrity. Face it, under every fashion statement, there is a naked human body. And the good news is that today, you do not need to settle for the same old thing that you picked up at first. Improve yourself! You step on back. You take that perfect body off that rag. I say one size fits all. Miss and man. There is something for the male, the female, the dog, and the cat. There's something for the kids. Something you want, something you did. Don't matter race or class, sex, gender, future, or past. Cause one size fits all. Gonna take that body off of that rack. Mix and match. Me, you, we, and they. Come on in, try it on, and take it away. It's skin tight. It is hot and light. Take the part, take the whole. Mix and match body and soul. It's the real you. It is the real me. Same as advertised on TV. Don't stay home alone, you just pick up that telephone and make that call. Me, you, we, and they come on and try it on and take it away. A little something both stylish and natural, wouldn't that be nice? And then we hear the Reverend Flynn say, Don't hold your breath. The failure of the golden age to materialize is a drag. And most people are agreed the product is never quite as advertised. Dr. Skinner, the universal body man, fades away into a Cheshire Cat smile multiplied on the screens, a huge pile of TVs in downtown east side store windows. A little bit of flicker and the scene changes to the interior of a tenement room where Stella now lives. Stella stands at the window looking out. She watches herself down below walk slowly across the street to the bus stop. At the bus stop, she slowly turns around, looks up, and sees herself watching herself from the window. An older man slides up behind her and the screen goes blank, same old thing. Autumn light flickers, ancient brain zoo reruns of Stella back there. Silhouette against the burning light of the silver window, just a kid trying to figure out the time grid outside. A lone maple tree sheds its leaves on the sidewalk.
Drone a preacher's voice comes over antique biological radio eternal Sunday morning a long time ago. It is the voice of the Reverend Billy Flame, the golden ladder man, ancient friend of the blue children and the rainbow children, guardian of the telepathic animals and sworn enemy of you know who. In Stella's old neighborhood, the green grass still sparkles, and her own keen pleasure in screen memories keeps the shadows hungry. There's a sharp smell of burning leaves up and down the block, maple and birch mostly, the metallic creak of the swings in the playground whiff of hot wires and burnt insulation, and then the wisdom radio voice gets louder, and it blends in with the loose rattle of leaves falling one upon the other, stirred up and falling in the little breeze, and Stella, about ten years old, stands beside her father, who leans on his rake, both of them gazing into the red, orange, blue, yellow, golden flames dancing in the sunlight and the reverend he speaks of temptation and he speaks of in the name of our temptation which is the identification with the graven image the false idol the blue carbon people say oh my child the sad creatures of habit they say don't touch you can't have it don't believe it you roll the dice and advance everything is in the hands of chance okay you advance to the number four that is iron tree eye of the storm you move from four to 24. Okay, you put your foot on the first rung, my child. Okay, you have passed by greed, but you are not yet free. Okay, you roll the dice and you climb that ladder to paradise. Say, okay, don't let go. Hold on tight, hold on. Don't let go. Okay, you feel the vibration in your arms, don't let go. Okay, you feel the vibration in your shoulders and your neck. Ha! Okay, you are moving into your head and down into your heart. Okay, ha! Something come in and something goes up. Something comes in and something presses outward. Okay! The vibration moves outward and inward, outward and upward. Okay, ha! It is in the energy and the shape of energy. Ha! It is in the name and the soul's breath. It's all and everything. It is the serpent of desire. Say, oh my child. Do not mistake the artificial for the real. Do not mistake the cheap snapshot for the eternal flow of meaning. Do not mistake the sad creatures of habit for the telepathic animals whose wild hearts make the sound of wind in the trees and whose eyes are full of fire. Ha! Oh, my children, do not mistake the bullshit death trap scum and stagnation for the holy city of imagination. <sighs> it is in the nature of things that the things of nature reassert themselves. If not sooner, then later. If not gently, then with violence. <sighs> what has been denied shall return. The mistakes which we all make upon occasion, not so occasionally as all that, just keep on coming back. You mark my words. That slimy death rat, one-eyed, shot a bug, turnal, city skin of man. He wants to skin you alive in the dead of the night, nail your skin on a billboard and stuff dollar bills in your sex pocket, my child. No brain photo hitman loves you anywhere near as I do. Preacher's voice trails off atomic dust of antique radio faded wallpaper pattern. Endless corridor of yesterday brain zoo. Echoes for eternity. Light dies from the windows as night falls soft. There's a worn out one dollar bill on the counter of Doc Skinner's Emporium. Pretty. They're caught up in the gears and the lenses of black and white city. 
And the x-ray animals that howl out in the night And their tongues are like broken flames And they got untamed hearts And they got glass bones And they're a long, long way from home And Stella, she in a rage Her animal mimp is trapped in a bone white cage Oh, Stella light And Stella no light Stella's just a shadow And she lost in the night The scene changes. When Stella goes to sleep that night, she has a dream. A crowd of thin people blow into town like old leaves, two-dimensional relatives out of the old photo album. No insides, no attachments. Stripped down oxide mummers who spread the photo plague and leave town on the next dirty wind don't blow any good coming or going. In her dream, they file into a large room with naked light bulbs, black and white tiles alternate across the floor. The curtains are drawn on the large windows along one wall. It is early evening. Far away sound of traffic outside. The actors set up their tents around the edges of the room. A group of long-haired technical people are laying out cable, a low sound, as if something underground wants to get out, wants to break into pictures, as they say they are making a movie about Stella in her dream, but nobody can make up their mind what happens to her at the end. Everybody has got a different line on the story. Everybody is fishing for time. Everybody is telling their story about the way it is with Stella. Maybe she should just end up in a home for the elderly. Maybe she should just go nuts, take all kind of weird dope, get into porn movies, go on the skids, jump off a bridge. Anything would be more realistic than growing old, they say. Long shots alternate with close-ups, half-tone, black and white with full color, sharp long shadows blur under the hot lights, pink eyes, and the color blue. Disembodied voice says this hurts me more than it hurts you. Everybody is serious. Everybody is intent upon the nature of their work. Everybody's been waiting a long time for just this moment to occur in just this way. One. Stella is lying on a bed in a barren room. The bed looks like an old birthing table with restraining straps, heart, breath, muscle pulsations on the video screen. The doctor tells Stella that there's a problem. Her blood cells won't hold together. Why? Because they've lost their glue. This little ditty comes into her mind. Oh, Doc Skinner. He's the M.H. man He's got that painless medicine When you're feeling down and sick Old Doc Skinner, he talks that language That language of click Two Dr. Skinner ducks under the black cloth cover of an old-fashioned large-format camera. One side of the frame, the ancient black box on its tripod on the other. Stella on the steel bed, posed for the camera. Three, Stella's solarized reflection. Zero degrees thick, comes off slick as a whistle. One continuous equation now, silver shadow and slippery light. The watery stillness of her eyes unblemished by the presence of any imperfection. Four. Dr. Skinner smiles, takes a little bow. He shuffles up to a podium in front of an old hall. Now let's take a look at this brand spanking new expertise. The new light suction device takes an infinite number of images off the living human body. Hardly any side effects at all. The body of the subject grows a new layer at a speed virtually faster than time itself. The good ones anyway, of course, boys. He explains. The really hard shots are the internal ones. The ones you can't see. The ear, mouth, throat, gut, intestines, vaginal passage. Scop it, drive. Can't get any purchase if you take my means. You just got to add the right tool 
for the job, and then he holds up. An electric hair curler, wires and rubber attachments dangling down an old sardine can. A rusty razor blade, a bunch of dried grass, smooth brown, chestnut on a string. Then the smell of sweet cow dung and hay filters into the room, bringing back those long ago summer days down on the farm. Lazy drone of bees in the honeysuckle. Five. Television over the hospital bed flickers black and white surgical brain zoo. Random memories flicker out of picture two. Stella can see her body lying on a table that is being drained of its subjective component. Cool flames of the blue children skitter about the room. The photo twins are sitting on an old worn out sofa in a corner. They're listening to the radio turned down low on its belly flames Sunday morning wisdom radio show. Dr. Skinner siphoning off some old dreams into a large stainless steel emotion shredder by the bed. He says, Yeah, we'll feed that to the afterlife riffraff on the other side of the tracks. But for Stella, memory wears the green dress for that summer in Idaho. Or something red for visiting grandma and the wolf. The wolf standing there. Something wrong with its tail changes to a small golden dog. Sails out the window on a silvery wind. <laughs> Photo twins are so pleased with themselves They do a little jig in the corner of the room And they stab little toy knives into their chests and stomachs They squeal with pleasure as they inscribe Tiny little memories in blood on their slippery little hides Each time one makes a little joke The other mimics it Then of course the other one has to mimic that ad infinitum Yes, little blood memories They chuckle in the corners and the leaves fall in a Luminous photo haze Shimmer in a clean wind Sunlight, wood, smoke 954, blue and white Ford with pins in a bad transmission Suburban driveway Are you going my way In the dry grass Withered in the ditch And the atmosphere is thickening In autumn dust Soon it'll get difficult to breathe Breathe Shimmer in a clean wind Sunlight, wood, smoke 954, blue and white four blue fins and a bad transmission for the driveway. Picture of Stella's old school gym. Saturday night in a dance floor filling up with the bodies of the love and the unloved. Each one marked by the little articulations of style which proclaim its owner's individuality. The distant smiles, the wisp of hair brushed away from that girl's eyes, mostly, mostly the unloved are there, the distantly loved. Sexy in that uncertain light. A little high. Everyone is going somewhere. Eight. This numerical slot remains empty a dream, unremarked, unremembered. Nine. The reinvention of the world in Stella's dream. In her dream, she could be the first one, but this is not certain. 
She invents the world in the simplest way possible. An angel in flames calls from heaven's silver window into the symmetrical complexity of the trees, the air, the earth, and the twilight high park, the pulse of blood, and ether, and the children running, running, and our heads are like cool flames in the woods, and the sound of rushing wind in the leaves. And the branches of the tall trees lashing their great magnetic arms in the storm and quicksilver static is gusting up against the window smash and dancing round the room down long hotel corridors and out into the wet blue streets and past the gray faced woman and the gray faced man standing in a doorway sliding in and out of mirrors and windows with a yearning which begins deep deep in the groin and a single ray of light comes out of the clouds falling upon a field grown wild thistle and milkweed pod and the bees swarming around a hive in the hollow tree at the very center of the field and the citizens of eternity are gathered together they open their arms ecstatic and orderly eyes are wet with tears ablaze with love and everything is alive and everything is holy the rainbow children, their lightning heads flickering in the forest, they rush through the trees towards where the angel fire glows high, high, and then the hard memory rain comes down, sharp panting cry of a woman in labor, faint smell of the good dirt back home, breath of sunlight between clouds, sharp eye in the leaves, paradise blue, twinge of stiff muscles, pain at first movement after a long illness, shift the weight one side to the other, precarious balance left and right, the centeredness of walking, standing, running, the rush of wind and the scratch, scratch of insect intelligence on evolution's table, and the implacable energy ancestors lean out of their sky windows, and they take her up, up into the symmetrical branches of the blue paradise tree, that's rock a baby, in the tree top. And if the bow breaks, the cradle will fall, and down will come cradle baby and all, it's a silver wind. Who the Sandman years ago And Zeke Radio bleeds life back Into the cold, cold cells And I'll come cradle Baby and all The airport is where the new world is staged. Children make everything into airplanes. They fly stuffed rabbits, toy cars, dinosaurs, plastic rats through the huge sky. They crash into each other like dead planets, like adult bodies, like glaciers in the night. As soon as it is over, the accident victims line up all over again and jostling against each other. They check their bags, buy tickets to Vancouver, Vanity, Toronto, Greed, New York, Paris, and they walk out on the tarmac towards the huge jet plane, its engines making the sound of war. Okay, you stand in the airport washroom. Breathe in. Okay, turn to the right. Breathe out. Okay, you turn to the left. Nobody is watching. There's nothing there. Just you and you. Okay, put your hands to your face. Okay, press your fingers to your eyes. Hold your body still. Okay, forward and back. Okay, stare at the glass. Nobody there. Nothing, just you and you. Okay, close your eyes. And feel the energy in your arm. Feel it in your fingertips. Feel the heat. Okay, get ready. Okay, open up your eyes. Me, you, and we, where are they? Look at yourself, looking at yourself, look at yourself, looking at yourself. Light streams back and forth between the eye and the eye. Me, you, we, and they. What do they got to say? Say that with me. I've got to, got to, got to, got to get free. Sigh and I. It's a you and a you. Everything is alive. And everything is moving. Everything is in emotion. Everything is in motion. Okay. Pose. Then you can watch that sweet energy 
Fog up in your face like a swarm of bees behind glass. That's photography. Okay, your smile. Thin as a silicone razor blade. It whizzes at the mirror. It falls into the steamer sink. You are waiting for your plane. You have been waiting all night long. And now it is morning time. And you know that a space has been cleared before you. Okay. When you look into the mirror, it's eye to eye. It's silver to class. That ghost smile broken. And the flash bone smash. How oh long you have seen it coming? A long way off. It is something new. It is something fresh. It is something hell in the hand of death. Okay, take yourself in hand. Okay, new child, sophisticate, dressed, undressed. This mirror only sees your simple, awkward, adult nakedness. <laughs> Small hairless animals stream out of the broken clothes lying on the clean tiles of the washroom floor. Their bodies are still wet from the chemical bath. In silence, they stream out under the door and into the main lobby of the airport. They all have the little faces of Dr. Skinner, but nobody notices. Captured on a newspaper over by the stand, anonymous, Young woman reborn in an airport washroom with no stars on the door. If you can play it in color, play it in black and white. Don't play it wrong, play it right. If you can find it by day, look late at night. The scene has changed, and so have you. What you thought of as a little vacation did not automatically lead to complete relaxation, but on the other hand, the longer you're away, the less you remember why you ever stayed. Your face is not exactly marked with the sign of happiness. In fact, you're still pretty much a stranger, funny. You always did like to make your own arrangements. Never thought you'd show up on a set like this, though, your body framed by an ordinary window rather than by the margin of a photograph. Darkness against light. Trees in the background. A suggestion of mountains over your shoulder, and we can see that there are two deer in the field, green grass. Three deer playing like dogs. I've never seen them do that before. No actors here. The sun shining on the grass, fading at the edges, green fading to black and white until finally you look out on a scene that we can't see. And all that we're left with is the memory of a high sign, a little nod or a tip of the head that says, remember me, a glance, the tone of voice. A small token of your affection and a display of our friendship, a photograph. A little discolored with age. At once an object of interest and neglect. A secret writing which doesn't really mean much to us anymore. After all, we've got our own lives to lead, our own colors to breathe, our own black and white. And if we can't say it loud, we try to say it softly. A few murmured words overheard have become a history of whispers, amorous and intimidating by turns, always incomplete, a perforated outline on or off the beat, funny, the way even breathing gets awkward if you think about it, shape, shift, cut, adjust, memory sifts down and turns to dust. We can try to say it in color then, try to say it in black and white, image is an image. And the truth is a truth. Photograph is a photograph. But it ain't 
living like real people? One thing happens. And then something else happens. And before you know it, it's all over. And in the blink of an eye, an observing eye, which does not want to blink because it might miss something but it always does blink it always does miss something shape shift cut and adjust memory sifts down and turns to dust Somebody said it, and somebody wrote it down. In the years, they reel out their story. Ten years later, everybody who's still around compares their reels, and it's really amazing. <laughs> 